This is one of a series of videos on the behaviors and biology of the ant Fidoli adrianoi, a very tiny ant of the longleaf pine forests of the Florida sand hills. One of the oddities is that it lines its nest with pieces of the sclerotia of a symbiotic mycorrhizal fungus of pines. Therefore, nest chambers are black and contrast with the white sandy soil. Why it does this is still a mystery, but the source of the sclerotia is not. This video explores the source of the sclerotia and methods for their isolation from soil for use in experimental studies. The mycorrhizal mycelia invade the spaces between the cells of the pine rootlets. The, the sclerotia are a resting stage that forms in this context. Sclerotia are ovoid with a hard, bumpy surface. Their interiors have a foamy appearance. With fluorescent stains, live sclerotia stain intensely for mycelial tissue. Because they're formed as a resting stage of a mycorrhizal fungus of pines, sclerotia are found in all the soils of pine forests, but their density varies with site and depth. How are sclerotia distributed within the soil? Digging a soil profile allows sampling sclerotia from different depths. This profile is 30 centimeters deep. The highest density of sclerotia is in the thin root zone at the surface, about 10 to 20 sclerotia per gram. Pine rootlets and mycorrhizae bind the sand into a firm mat. Sclerotia form more frequently in this layer and immediately below it. This surface layer holds together quite well. I turn now to separating sclerotia from soil. The density of sclerotia in soil ranges from 1.3 to 15 per gram of sand, depending on depth and, s and site. Organic matter, including sclerotia, are less dense than sand and can be separated by careful blowing. The material is first passed through a coarse sieve. The lighter organic mat matter is then gently blown to the far end of the tray. And the organic and sclerotia enriched fraction is collected. For industrial scale separations, a fan and catch trays can be used. The one time enriched fraction still contains a lot of sand and can be blown again. When sclerotia form a substantial fraction of the material, they can be further separated by rolling them on an inclined surface. <coughs> the, the ovoid sclerotia roll down an inclined surface, but the more angular sand and debris do not.
They accumulate at the bottom and can be collected from there. A purified sample of sclerotia at 30 magnifications. And again at 100 magnifications. Separating live from dead sclerotia. The voids in live sclerotia are filled with a dense material that makes them sink, but in dead sclerotia this material is absent and the voids are filled with air. Thus dead sclerotia can be separated from live ones by floating. The vessel is filled with water. then agitated and allowed to settle. Then filled to overflowing. The floating sclerotia are washed onto the screen below. The live sclerotia settle to the bottom from which they can be siphoned up. About half of the sclerotia were alive and sank 